Hi, Katie Ryan. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well, Betty. How are you? I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. So Katie Ryan, tell us about you. Mm. <laughs> well, if that's not a great question for this episode <laughs> and have somebody take a long pause. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I'm a double first name gal. Katie Ryan is the first name. Fotiatis is the last name. And um, I am in learning and development. And that spans from all the OD stuff into the actual development creation of learning experiences. Um, recently, I have started my own business, leaving from a corporation. And um, that has been an, that's been a wonderful adventure, <laughs> which is also, <laughs> I think, tied into this episode as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your biggest accomplishments in life and in work? What would you say? Um, that is always kind of a hard question for me to answer, honestly. Um, and I will, <laughs> I will say that when I am, for example, putting together a proposal and I have to add my bio or something like that, you know, it's, it's written, of course, to be professional and to show, hey, these are my accomplishments and all that. But I always forget about the stuff I've done and mm -hmm. until then. And then I read it and I'm like, I did that. Well, wow, that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, so just even the question, like, what are my biggest accomplishments? I start drawing a blank. I straight up have to go back and read these things to go, oh, this is stuff I've done in my life or in my work or whatever that may be. Um, so right now I'm having that moment. <laughs> where I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I've done. Something because I get hired to do things. So I've obviously done something right. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what are some of the big accomplishments? Well, my gosh, starting my own business is a pretty big accomplishment. Agreed. I had to like jump the hurdle on that one of um, getting from this place where I was constantly in a, you know, can I do this? Am I capable? And I was just so fraught with all of that fear um, that I had kind of forgotten. So back to the forgotten piece. I had kind of forgotten what I was currently doing. Um, and the organization I was working for is lovely. In fact, they've become clients of mine. Um, but I was doing all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I was finding the clients. I was um, working up the proposals, managing the project, producing the work, um, uh, doing client relationship, right? Like all the things and yet still I was kind of caught in this, this question of, can I do this? Mm -hmm. am, am I good enough? Am I capable enough? Do I have, do I have the capability for this? And, oh, how am I ever going to do this? And then, you know, it took a while and a really loving partner to be like, you're doing it already. And then I started my own business. So, yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that's a really big accomplishment. That is, that is definitely a big accomplishment. And you have, you have family. I do. I have a partner, a wonderful partner, and uh, Melissa, and we have our four-year-old as well. Four-year-old yeah. daughter. Oh, that's so nice. That's an accomplishment. And I love four. Four is a great age. This is so good. Three and mm. two mm -mm. were um, were like like living with a very small um, terrorist. I would say yes. Yeah. I would say it, it it was it was like living with a tiny terrorist with mood disorder and addiction issues. <laughs> I never knew from one millisecond to the next where we were gonna be. <laughs> that's the best that's the best description I've ever heard of two or three year olds. Um, and four year olds are like someone came down from heaven and blessed them with, with uh, curiosity and excitement and everything is, oh, oh, oh like, and why, and why does it work? Why? Like and they really want to know, like, why, mm -hmm. why? Yeah. Yeah. Four is, four is a great age. Um, it's magic. I, it is, I love it. it. <laughs> and yeah, that, that is also an accomplishment. Yeah. I feel like, absolutely. oh my gosh. 
I, I had a real parenting win the other day. I may have shared this with you before. I think I did share this with you before, um, but it keeps happening. So it makes me feel good is when, um, when Rayleigh will sing Shaka Khan songs. And I'm like, you've done something right. I, I have influenced that. And I that's, feel good. that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. So let me take that, that question I just asked you about your accomplishments and kind of twist it a little. Mm -hmm. What would others say about you as far as what would others say are your biggest accomplishments? So I'll tell you something funny is I had that question recently, but it was, it was from a sleep doctor. Cause I was doing a sleep consult, like oh, yeah. help me. I don't sleep well. And, and the, the practitioner said, um, would you describe yourself as, and like went through this list, I guess, because those are the people who show up in the office. Like, would you describe yourself as driven and ambitious and, um, um, take the initiative and like went on, on this mm -hmm. list of things. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm like hemming and hawing. And he said, would other people describe you that way? And I was like, oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Other mm -hmm. people would describe me that way. Right. As somebody who um, goes beyond is ambitious, very driven, takes the initiative, um, curious, constant learner, really, dives into um, how am I going to operate from integrity, mulls it over, thinks about it nonstop, and then finally mm -hmm. makes a decision. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, other, other people would have very different things to say than how I describe myself. Yeah. Any mm -hmm. specific accomplishments that they would point to that maybe you haven't mentioned? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Let me think about that for a moment. Well, I've lived many lives. Yeah, I have. And that's a constant joke. <laughs> and <laughs> that's a constant Are we joke. We're talking like nine more lives? Like, uh, how many? Like, what are you talking about? More than nine lives. So this will be one of those moments where something comes up and I tell a story mm -hmm. and um, someone will go, was that the time when you were like in early childhood? Was that the time you thought you were going to go to clown school? Which time are we talking about here? <laughs> Yeah. So um, I've got to think through the lives. I have reinvented myself many times through those lives in huge life changes that have occurred. And I don't just mean that reinvention like, oh, Phoenix coming from the ashes, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I mean, total career changes. So going from um, theater and American Sign Language and um, education mm -hmm. into leadership and into um, adult learning and instructional design. Yeah. So within each of those, there's been massive amounts of education and certification and, and like complete career changes every single time. Yeah. But I finally found it where I land because I get to keep you know, learning things. And yeah. You like this spot evolving. right now. You like this spot. Good. So what has been your experience with imposter syndrome? Oh my gosh. I didn't really understand, maybe even hear about it until, I don't know, I don't know how many years ago, but it, it wasn't something that I was familiar with um, as a teenager by any means. And, and just to give like some reference around this, I'd have never thought <clears throat> I will be 29 forever. I mean, so you look 29. So thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't know about it then. I didn't know about it in my twenties, but somewhere, somewhere in the area of the thirties, I started to hear that term used and I started to read a little bit about it. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, just that constant feeling and thought process with anything of, is this good enough? Am I good enough? Will this? And so that, that terminology kind of gave some, some framework for me, for mm -hmm. example, for, um, 
for this this conversation that we're having about imposter syndrome. Yeah. You and I are on camera. Don't know if this is going to be audio or video. Yeah. But I changed out of my <laughs> <laughs> fingerless gloves because I've been cold today. And my, you know, my sweatshirt and everything. Um, cause I didn't have meetings today into a blazer so that I could be taken seriously uh-huh. about imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Do you, uh, do you remember your first encounter with it? Like when you first realized you were having the feelings and this is imposter syndrome. I don't know that if I, like, if I went back on a timeline, um, it was probably upon birth. I may not have thought that I did it well. <laughs> you might not. <laughs> oh man, can we can we rewind? Okay, I'm gonna try that one more time. I know I can. I'm gonna need a. T- <laughs> I need another take. Okay, because I know I was like wah, but maybe I should have been like wah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> your mother is really glad you didn't do that again. I'll tell you that. Okay, no, but in all seriousness, in all seriousness. Um, <laughs> I really think that even into childhood, I had this constant feeling of, um, am, is what I'm providing enough? Always is what I'm providing enough. Um, so, I mean, I can think back to elementary school and just looking around. I remember being interviewed for a gifted class and, mm-hmm. and like looking around going, what am I doing in here? Like, I know that kid, this was maybe fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. You know, I, mm, I that kid and that kid, but why am I here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you still struggle with imposter syndrome? I mean, you did change your clothes. So I, I did. mean, you look nice, but I don't mean, look, I don't know that it was really necessary, <laughs> but yeah yes um yes the answer is yes and so yes and Mm -hmm. the awareness helps Mm -hmm. so even I was aware of the ridiculousness nature of being like I've got to change my clothes but then the flip side to that was me going okay I I feel better if I am showing up to this engagement um, and I can accept that about myself right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. so instead of getting all up, getting all up um, with my judge, right. Yes. Being like, what are you doing? And this is about mm-hmm. imposter syndrome and look at you and all that. I was like, I know this is hilarious, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> it is, it's pretty so funny. There's some acceptance there of, of just being able to have the awareness of it and also managing some stuff. Yeah. So, so, and I will say that one of the things I read not too long ago, I think was um, maybe an HBR mm. article where, where it was talking about, I don't stop, know, telling, to the effect- stop telling women they have imposter syndrome. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, and man, that landed with me, mm-hmm. that landed heavy. I was like, Ooh, this, this is, yeah, this is hitting a home place for me. Mm-hmm. For sure. Just, mm-hmm. It's a great like resource. Mm-hmm. Gosh, it's so good. Yeah. Right. Like, okay. Um, uh, in, in the culture of, of, of being cultured female, like I'm expected to do all the things. Well, guess what? I'm human and mm-hmm. I can't do all the things, but the wiring yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? My From an early age. wiring says you got to do all the things. You got to be great at all the things. And don't let any of the balls drop. Right. Like, you're juggling the stuff, but don't let them drop. Well, I mean, that's pretty much a setup yes. for failure Agreed. and constant, constant second guessing. What am I doing? Is this enough? No, it's not enough. It couldn't possibly be enough because I've got to keep all the balls in the air. And if mm-hmm. I let any of them drop, it's a disaster. Yep. Yeah. So there's been a lot of reconditioning um, and reframing for myself to have that awareness and and start questioning it. It, Okay. Is this my conditioning or is this like, can I tell myself some truth here? Yeah. Right. right. Can I tell myself the truth here? I'm, I'm thinking I'm not good enough. I'm thinking this, that, or the other. Um, And I, I need to have those reminders Mm -hmm. of telling myself the truth. Betty, I write myself notes. 
and put them as post-its. Yeah. So like you open the kitchen cabinet and inside the cabinet, there will be a little post-it note yeah. that says, you know, some little reminder like, oh, you're, you're, you're worthy. So, yeah. Thanks. I needed to hear that thanks. right now. Appreciate that. Thanks, me. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's talk some more about when you're in a moment where you're feeling that unworthiness that imposter syndrome mm. what does it feel like like you, you mentioned a few things that you maybe you're thinking but like what do you feel do you have any physical reactions mm. do you have emotional like emotions going on what does it feel like yes mm. so yes all those things it to me it feels like a combination of stuff anxiety starts mm. creeping up and when the anxiety starts creeping up, um, my rational thinking starts decreasing. So we can just kind of watch it. <laughs> you know, it's like watching this little this little bar graph. One bar goes up, the other bar goes down. Um, and and I kind of go offline a little bit, where where that that anxiety starts creating fear. Mm-hmm. And then the fear tells the inner judge to jump in and really piggyback on that fear and make sure to validate all the fears as being correct. Yeah. Um, and physically, it feels like constriction in my core. Yeah. And, and in a energetic kind of speaking, I feel like I'm getting small childlike, like I am shrinking. Um, does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Especially the feeling small. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm only five, two on a good day anyway. So when I start to feel (laughs) small, it's like really small. It's like pocket size. So (laughs) like a poly pocket, Yep, like a little poly, like a little buddy pocket. I mean, anyways, Mm -hmm. uh, when was, when was your most recent sort of episode of imposter syndrome? When do you think? Oh my gosh. I mean, other than the blazer. <laughs> yeah. Besides the blazer, <laughs> which we're only okay. going to count halfway because, because <laughs> we're only going to count halfway. Okay. Um, I think this one comes to mind mm-hmm. is I needed to put together a proposal. Um, I, I was responding to an RFP, a request for proposals and I'm putting stuff together. And I know that for this proposal, because I'm familiar with what happens in my town, I'm familiar with what's going on with the organizations, right? I kind of stay on top of these things. I know that I've got a really good shot at it. Mm. Really good shot. Mm -hmm. Rational me knows I've got a really good shot at this. Okay. But then that voice creeps in, right? Mm -hmm. Telling me that, um, and I even know who, who else is likely to put in a proposal. And then I start doubting myself. Now, this proposal is asking for e-learning. That is what I do. Mm-hmm. And I know that those who are going to respond may not necessarily be e-learning designers. They may be content experts. So they're mm-hmm. subject matter experts. But that's not what the proposal is asking for. And yet I'm still going, is this enough? Will this be okay? I'm questioning everything. And Mm -hmm. and just to kind of give listeners who maybe don't have this going on, we're not talking about healthy, um, what would the word be? Um, Like a healthy understanding of one's limitations, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not the opposite where somebody's like, I know that I'm the best and, you know, and and nobody else can compete. It's not like just the opposite of that. It's this, this, um, obsessive is not the word I'm looking for. There's another word, intrusive. Mm -hmm. It's an intrusive thought that, that really comes in there and permeates and kind of starts taking over like in a movie where, where there's like the, the bad fog that comes in you uh-huh. know, and it kind of takes over everything. It's that kind of, kind of thought process where it's like, Oh no. And I was having that. Uh-huh. I was going through that. And I ended up getting the, I ended up getting the contract because my rational mind at first knew, Hey, 
you know, you're, you're more than likely going to be one of the best fits for this. Mm -hmm. But then that other piece just yeah. got in there and started wreaking havoc. And I feel the constriction. I can feel the throat constriction. The chest feels tight. The stomach feels like it's kind of moved up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that anxiety creeps in. And, you know, all of this stuff is going on. And I second guess myself. And then I start needing to, to talk it out constantly. And I'm one to stay in my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um but then I'm, I'm, you know, I'm double checking with people. Hey, am I good enough? Is this okay? Am I going to be okay? Like, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And it's like, goodness, confidence went. <laughs> yep. <laughs> gone. <laughs> yep. So, so when that happens, how do you cope? Do you have techniques that you put into practice? You kind of alluded to some of them earlier, but like, what, is there anything that you do that makes it better? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I practice mindfulness. I do. I practice a lot of mindfulness because it keeps me present and in the moment and being able to tell myself what reality is. So um, for me, that looks like a few different things. I did mention, you know, I write little notes to myself. I journal mm -hmm. and I journal in a way where I'm writing things out because when I write them out, I can look at it in a different way. I can look at it objectively and go, is that true? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this thing actually true? So I can ask myself, you know, if my, and if, if my thought is, oh, I haven't done anything to qualify me for this. I can look at it and go, is that true? Do we need to go back and read that resume? Mm -hmm. You know, um, or maybe I also in practicing mindfulness, I will meditate trains my brain to, to quit doing the splinter and going everywhere, yeah. um, which likes to bounce around in this really kinetic kind of way monkey and just brain. stay with it. Okay. Monkey oh, brain. mega monkey brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And, and so being able to find center when the anxiety creeps up is a big deal mm -hmm. to ground. Okay. Well, what's happening right now? Well, right now, you know, I can feel my sit bones pressing into the chair right now. I'm looking at Betty right now. My hands are on my desk right now. I can take a breath right now, you know, and yeah. so just even be able to kind of mitigate the anxiety helps to decrease the other. Yeah. Anything else? As far as techniques that I use, yeah, I practice gratitude. I know that sounds kind of unrelated, but it's very helpful for me, again, to stay focused on um, telling myself the truth mm -hmm. so I can, I can reroute that, that wiring in my brain that wants to shoot straight to disaster. Right. <laughs> I can go, right. oh, actually, yep. <laughs> we have things to be grateful for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you say to somebody or share with them who's experiencing imposter syndrome like right now? Oh, if you have a good friend, a good friend who is supportive, but also tells the truth, um, lean into that person when you need them. Mm -hmm. um, I have some lovely friends where if I am, if I'm in a particular low point, I can turn to them and, and be honest and say, okay, like I'm at that place again, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm here again. I've gone to the neighborhood in my mind that wants to, you know, catastrophize everything. Right. Um, and they are fantastic about being those who will say, okay, but that's not true because last month you did this really big project and you nailed it. Mm -hmm. You know, or do you remember this time last year when this really hard family situation was going on? Do you remember how that turned out? You know, like bringing me back to reality. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have a good friend to do that, maybe write notes from your um, uplifted self for when, you know, you can read them when you're not in that place. Yeah. That's what the post-it notes do for me. Um, or the reminders or the journaling. Sometimes it's helpful for me to go back and look at that and go, oh, I've been here before. Yep. Yep. All right. I have just one more question for you, Katie Ryan. Okay. 
And that is, why did you want to be part of this imposter syndrome project? What made you raise your hand and say, pick me? Oh my gosh. Okay. That's a good question. Um, because I'm a firm believer that if we can talk honestly and n- normalize, if mm, you will, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. these conversations, these yeah. feelings, these thought processes, I, I truly believe that the more we do that with all these taboo topics, the, mm-hmm. <laughs> that we break that apart and go, hey, there is light shining in on this dark spot. And guess what? It's not so scary anymore because mm-hmm. a bunch of people will raise their hands courageously um, and go, yeah, that's me too, right? Yeah. I have that thought. I have that feeling. I um, have had that experience. And then, and then we move forward and heal. Mm -hmm. And then we can turn to our friends and go, I'm, I'm there again. Or we can sit down, you and I and say, so what about this thing? You know, this, this silly thing that we do, I know there it is again, Mm -hmm. instead of harboring it within and, and, um, And letting it fester, I guess, is kind of a way to say it. Yeah. Letting it fester. And um, that's harmful. And I, that's, you know, I don't want to be there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Me neither. And uh, and we're so appreciative of you. Thank you for your sharing your story and being vulnerable um, and talking with us about imposter syndrome. So thank you, Katie Ryan. Thank you, Betty. If you like this series and you want to show support, go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash if you ask Betty to learn more about how you can support this and future if you ask Betty projects.